you have got to take up that mantle of motherhood and teach your children the truth. Mother's Day, everybody. Pastor Amy's coming to open us in prayer. Hi, good morning. So, happy Mother's Day to everybody, whether you're a mother or not. I am sure that you have someone in your life that you are influential over teachers, for example. Sometimes they may not have their own children, but their students are their children. And uh, I know a, a lady. A teacher friend of mine got her very first Mother's Day card this Aww. week from a student. She's not a mom, biologically, and um, that just touched her to tears because she realized what the impact she has on people's lives, um, even when she's not a biological mom. So happy Mother's Day to all the women out there. I'm sure you have an influence over someone. Amen. So let's open up prayer. Lord God, we thank you for this day, this beautiful day. Lord, we thank you for all our moms. Lord, we thank you for the moms that are still here and the moms that have gone on to be with you. Lord, we thank you for making us moms, for making us who you, who we are. You formed us to be the people that care for others and that are just intrinsically motivated to be nurturing and caring and loving for other people. Lord, we just thank you for our moms. And we just thank you for you, Lord God, that we and leave out of here differently than we came, that you would help us to remember that we are impactful more than we know, that we, that we are 
who you created us to be and that we should see ourselves as you see us and see others as you see them. Lord, we just ask that you would bless us and guide us this week, Lord, as we move through our week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We allow the river of God to flow to us, to touch us. We allow the river of God to flow in us, to change us. Through us to change the world. Flow through us to change the world. Holy Spirit will do us, touch and change our world. God to flow to us, to touch us. We allow the river of God to flow in us, to change us, through us to change the world, flow through us to change the world. Holy Spirit will do us, touch and change our world. Disease, you get away from me. 
am the healed of the Lord. I am the healed of the Lord. I am the healed of the Lord. Sickness and disease, you get away from me. Lord, 
set your heart upon the altar set your feet on holy ground in the presence of our Savior love is found Cast your eyes upon his glory When the storm is all around Surrender to his spirit Hope is found God is here God is here, I'm drawing near, my God is here, he has calmed the stormy waters, he has stilled the raging sea. At the feet of Jesus, peace is found. God is here. God is here. I'm drawing. My God is here. God is here. God is here. There's no more fear. My God.
has calmed the stormy waters. He has stilled the raging seas. And at the feet of Jesus, peace is found. So chest pain. Father, I just thank you right now. Lord, I thank you that you spoke peace through the storm and the storm stopped. You spoke to the waves, be still. You spoke to the storm, be still in peace. So Lord, we speak right now, peace, be still. If that's you, wherever you're at, if you're having the chest pain, just lift your hand to the Lord right now and receive his healing and receive his peace that comes with it. In Jesus' name. I love your voice. 
You have led me through fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. happening in the room we would go out of the room so for the you who are watching with the heart issue just receive it receive the fullness of your healing God doesn't give us words of knowledge and then not follow through with, with what he's saying so he wants to heal you but it's up to you to receive it so just receive it just say I receive the quickening power of the Holy Spirit in my body right now. Maybe lay your hand right on your heart and say, I receive quickening power of the Holy Spirit in my body right now. Because the Word says that that same Spirit that raised Jesus lives inside of you and will quicken or make right what's wrong in your mortal body. Amen. Part of the covenant is for healing, so receive it in Jesus' name. You see, we just talked about what we heard last, my pastor Becky and I heard last night on TV about uh, the Spirit of God. There was a meeting going on down the street from the hospital, and this lady who was not a Christian was dying from cancer, and the Spirit <coughs> of God invaded the hospital room while she was being examined, and the heat or the fire of God came on her and drove the cancer out and 
they literally dismissed her just shortly after that because the cancer was all gone. I mean, she went from dying to now it's all gone. So she went walking down the street and heard a meeting going on and walked in right as the altar call was being given and just kept walking in the doors and right up to the front and received Jesus as Lord and Savior. So, you know, God may be, he might be showing his goodness to you because he's reaching out to you right now. So maybe you need to get saved right now. So not just receive the healing, receive what who purchased the healing. Jesus purchased that for you with the stripes that he bore on his back. So just say this with me and say, Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. And I thank you for dying for me on the cross, paying the price for my sin so that I could be a child of God. I lay aside my sin right now and I receive your cleansing and your forgiveness and I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Take my life from this moment on. Do something miraculous with me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for setting me free from the power of sin. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are now part of the kingdom of God. Contact us. We've got some, uh, because if you're watching online, you have access to a computer, so we can email you some, uh, what are they called? PDF files to help you in your journey. You've just begun a new life. So we've got some, some things to help you. So just contact us. Amen. Welcome to the family. Woo! Woo! And congratulations on having that heart in you. And happy Mother's Day. <laughs> you get to you get to be here for next year's Mother's Day. <laughs> Just tell the devil, no, you ain't taking me out. I got healed. God healed me. You ain't taking me. Amen. 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 Well, we're going to continue now with before Pastor Becky comes and shares an awesome message for Mother's Day. Um, with our offering declaration. So if you want to read this with us, just go to transformationchurch.com, T R A N S, the number four, M A T I O N, church.com. Click on the giving tab, and under that, one of the choices is offering declaration. Click on offering declaration, and you can read this with us. If you're watching the replay, by the way, if you're watching the replay, you can get healed of your heart issue too. It doesn't have to be. God is outside of time. So he gave, he, he may have gave Pastor Gary that word for right now and for the future. I believe the same anointing will be on the replay from now until Jesus returns. So anybody ever watching this can receive the same thing. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't, don't look at the date. That this was first aired and think, oh, I missed it. No, you didn't miss it. Just the fact that you're watching. God knew you'd be watching. <laughs> Just take it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're going to do our declaration. Because I am a tither and a giver, the windows of heaven are open to me, and God rebukes the devourer for my sake. I am blessed financially and receive a blessing that I cannot contain. I do not worry about lack, knowing God supplies all my needs richly and abundantly. Therefore, I am able to sow freely and liberally. And I choose to sow cheerfully, generously, and bountifully, knowing I will reap bountifully. I have in abundance every favor and heavenly and earthly blessing. All my needs are met and I abound in every good work. Because I obey Him, the Lord blesses everything I put my hand to. He grants me abundant prosperity. He makes me the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. The blessings of God are chasing me and overtaking me. 
<laughs> because God loves to see me prosper, I am believing him for jobs and better jobs, advancements, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, God ideas and strategies, debts paid off, expenses decreased, blessings and increases, financial freedom and breakthroughs and houses and lands. Amen. And that's just the beginning. Father, we thank you for the privilege we have of operating under your uh, financial system. That we don't have to be limited to what's going on here on earth. We get to operate under the open windows of heaven, according to your word. And we receive that, and we thank you for it. And as we sow in faith, we believe for harvest in Jesus' name. We believe that you're going to open our eyes, that we're going to see uh, financial blessings will be will just be highlighted, like jump off in front of us so we can see them, and we'll have the courage and the faith to participate in them in Jesus' name. I thank you, and we say again, we will not participate in inflation in Jesus' name. Inflation is going to work for us. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. And Pastor Becky's coming. We're going to honor our mothers. Oh, yes. First, we're going to honor our mothers. So, you want to come while I take care of that? <laughs> All right. Well, if you're a mom out there, happy Mother's Day again. We love you, and we'd love for you to come and be a part of Transformation Church here at 600 North Lake Destiny Road, Maitland, Florida, in the Sheraton, Orlando North. So, welcome. Anyway, I guess he can just hand those out and I can begin so we can let the moms get to their lunches at a proper time. They might want to choose a different color bag. She should have been here because they've got enough candy to have a, co a sugar coma and then, <laughs> and then a gift bag with other goodies in it. So we love you moms. We love you. We love you. We love you. We do. <laughs> Anyway, there's three different kinds of bags if you want to trade yours. Okay? Do you know that you have enough dead raising power on the inside of you? You could raise the dead wherever you go. That's the truth. Amen. And the only reason I'm saying this is I keep hearing the Holy Spirit say that there's enough power in this room to raise the dead. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for another Mother's Day. Father, I thank you that no matter what day it is for others that are watching later on, Father, this is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And Father, we thank you that in you we live and move and have our being. Father, that our youth is renewed like the eagles, that we will run and not be weary. We will walk and not faint, that you bless our food and water. You take sickness away from the midst of us. And you, this, and I declare right now, I am the healed of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalms 108.13 through, and this is Amplified Classic Edition, and I I will try not to be a fire hydrant, but I feel that fire hydrant anointing, so just hang on for the ride. Psalm 109.13, through and with God we shall do valiantly, for it is he who, who shall tread down our adversaries. We used to sing a song, through our God we shall do valiantly, it is he who shall tread down our enemies, we'll sing. And shout the victory. Christ is king. And I won't sing the rest of it, but anyway, I'm, the, the, the title of this right now is The Power of a Mom. And the men you listen to because it's the same power for you, but this is specifically the power of, for, of a mom. And we can't, you know, God has done so much for us that we cannot just sit back and do nothing. I'm calling for moms to arise everywhere, wherever you hear those that are listening outside this room, because there are people we find out that do that. So you could you could come in if you want to. And those that are listening online, I'm calling for moms and grand. If you're a grandmother, you're a mom to arise and take the position that God has placed you in. Um, there's a, a lady named that I watched on Flashpoint. GoVictory.com has flashpoints on Tuesday and Thursday nights at eight, and they discuss political things and different. Uh, they actually did prayer emphasis this week. Of course, since Thursday night was, or Thursday was a national day of prayer that, for those that didn't know. So we participated in, anyway, there's this lady named Kimberly Fletcher who founded Moms for America. 
Moms for America. Anyone heard of her? I hadn't. I had not heard of her. If you want to look it up, it's called momsforamerica.us. Momsforamerica.us. She founded it in 2004 because she saw a need and the Holy Spirit moved on her. And a lot of you will sit back and say, you know, well, I can't do anything. I'm just one person. Yes, you can. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And I'm telling you right now, and this, you know, for anyone that thinks this is a, a feminist thing or whatever, that's your problem. I'm telling you right now, the moms are rising like never before. And God has seasons. And I believe this is a season of women that need to arise like you've never arisen before. And I can tell you why we're arising. Because I am, I is one. I am one. Because you're touching our babies. Amen. If you touch our babies, we'll kill you. Amen. You leave our babies alone. I don't care if it's my grandbabies or my babies. You will not teach them transgender crap. You're not going to be teaching them uh, all of those what is it called? Critical race theory. We're just not going there. My children are my children. My grandchildren are my grandchildren. And I can tell you right now, you're not telling them how to... I'm raising them. You are not. And some of you grandparents out there, maybe your daughter, your son, they're on drugs or alcohol, and you are the only... Or for whatever's going on, you are the salt and light in their world. You are the believer in their world. And I'm telling you, I give you permission, Grandma... I give you permission right now. You take charge. You pray over those grandbabies. You lay hands on them. You decree and declare that they will become the men and women of God that God's created them to be. Don't let them go. Don't let Satan have them. Do not. It's that a child will leave them. Many times it takes that child to get your son or daughter back into the kingdom of God or in the kingdom of God to begin with. But don't lose hope. And God will encourage you. He will strengthen you. And he has put you on this earth for such a time as this. A lot of people are going, whoa, it's being, you know, the gas prices are going up. All this stuff's going up. I see this as the greatest time to be alive, the greatest time for you and I to shine as bright stars in the darkness. I'm telling you. People need the Lord, and you have him right inside of you. You have dead raising power on the inside of all of us do, on the inside of us right now. We are powerhouses for God, and we need to recognize that and draw upon that. And especially moms, I get it. You wear so many hats, so many things that you have to do. And I remember in the day when I, you know, I'm not, I'm a grandma now, but with the kids where you're driving them to soccer practice or this, that, and the other, and, and um, Pastor Amy had five children. She, all of them were in sports, and you know all that stuff going on, and and you're and you're working. You know both both parents working, and it's a lot. But I want to encourage you that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Now I also heard the Holy Spirit say it wouldn't be a bad idea to take a spa day. Some of you need to just pamper yourself. I'm serious. I'm I'm <coughs> saying that by the Holy Ghost. Somebody needed to hear that. It is not. You need to take a spa day. It doesn't come hell or high water. Some One of the things that Joyce Meyer said that has stuck with me, praise God, because I always felt like every now and then, one, one time God said to me, are you God? You Because know, I felt like I had to take care of everything. I had to cover this. And I had to do that. Oh, I see all this. Yes. <laughs> all right. I get it. And you feel the pressure of whatever. And, um, and she said she was going through all that. And God said, well, if you die today, would life go on? Would that situation get taken care of? It would. Somebody would step up. So sometimes you need to take a spa day, ladies. And a spa day for you might be just going and sitting in the park and reading a book. It may not be that you literally want to go, but I did hear spa day, so that actually is a word of knowledge for somebody. <laughs> They're saying, like, bring on some more. <laughs> but what this lady, this Kimberly Fletcher did, and it's just really, she inspired me so much because she represented my heart and what I've been feeling. Um, I actually was going to run for school board, for those that didn't know, but my district is not available again for another till 2024. And time will tell and see what we're doing. But what we need to do whatever it takes. You can run for the school board. You can run for city council. You can run for mayor. You can get involved. You can go to after school reading. You can do after school activities, do different things, set up a, a Christian club. And don't be told no. We've got constitutional rights to do anything that God calls us to do. Amen. Amen. So she saw a need that mothers needed to get involved in the culture because the culture was, was actually trying to teach society's ways, and they weren't our ways. Amen? Amen. And this is what she said. 
Mothers need to get a place to get involved in the culture to promote the principles of liberty <laughs> and virtue in their homes because they were being counterbalanced in our society. This was in 2004. Thank God she was a woman that had insight in 2004. While many of us didn't know. I mean, we didn't realize how bad it was getting. And she said that Moms for America is a national movement. So I don't, again, I don't care if you actually have children, just like Pastor Amy said. If you might be a school teacher and, and they are your children. Or you just never had, bi had biological children, but you've mothered people. By nature, women do mother. They're caregivers. That is why the mama bear comes out when you try to touch their cub. You can't, don't touch, now they might beat their butt, but you can't, don't you touch them. Amen? Amen. Amen. And why I beat, I mean, properly spank. No, we don't beat people. I can just see it now. Huh? Tear them up. Tear them up. <laughs> So she said, we are a national movement of moms to reclaim our, reclaim our culture for truth, family, freedom, and the Constitution. And we are very passionate about empowering moms, promoting liberty, and raising patriots to heal America from the inside out. And as she was saying it, and I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit whooshing me right now, as she said that, I recognized, it was like, the Holy Spirit dropped in me how powerful we as moms and grandmothers are. We are raising the next generations to come. That's who we're, we have more influence than anybody if we take advantage of it. We have the ability to influence this next generation and our children like nobody else can. And we need to take that opportunity to do that. One of the things she said is we're called to be light in the darkness. She told a story about how, remember how Kavanaugh had all this can't think of the word. He was going for Supreme Court, and they came against him and lied about him, and they were persecuting him, and he almost didn't make it. And I didn't know this, but the Moms for America showed up. Did you know that? I did not know this. I didn't even know there were Moms for America. The, the, some of you might have known this. I did not. And according to the senator, they came back and told her, you saved him. Basically, he got put into the Supreme Court because Moms for America went up against, and she said, and I'll just say it plainly, women. They were feminists who were coming against him and giving women a bad name. You can be a woman of God and do everything that God called you to do. Feminism is just misplaced something or other. They're whacked. And so we need to, and I can say that, I'm a woman. And and again, you have your own opinion, go for it. But but it was because of the, the Moms for America that, that stood up and said, no, Kavanaugh is not this, that, or the other. And they stood up for him that he was put into the Supreme Court. When she said that, I, I recognized again how powerful we are. You know that a woman can walk in a room and the whole atmosphere change like that. Men can't do that, but we do. And we got to be careful because we need to do it properly. I don't even think we're aware sometimes, but we, so when you're at, actually upset and you're ready and you have an attitude, the whole room changes, the whole atmosphere changes. So sometimes we need to check our attitude at the door. I'm just saying. And not just it, we do. We need to check our attitude at the door and make sure we got God's attitude because we, we're carriers. We are carriers, like, in a different way. Like God made us that way. He made us to be the protector. We just innately are going to protect our young. We're going to protect our children. And because of that, I do know that when they were having all of this mess with, I think it was Southwest Airlines, it was two ladies that put up the, the big stink about not... I'm not going to go there, but anyway, um, they were trying to make sh all of the pilots get the jab. And several of them, by the way, we've just seen stories, got it, and they can't, they're no longer air um, pilots because they, it caused myocarditis and some other things that have happened to them. But they, they huh? They can't pass the physical. And they can't pass the physical anymore. We just saw a, a, somebody just share their testimony about that, which I don't know if that's a testimony, but we saw that, and we know that by Jesus Christ stripes we were healed, for praise God you can be healed, and I'm telling you too, for those yeah. out there that had COVID, that have leftovers, receive the healing. There is enough power in you and I to raise the dead. We have dead raising power because the Holy Spirit lives in us. Our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. That means that he dwells in us, and he is the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead that Pastor Eddie just referred to. I received the quickening power of the Holy Spirit in my body or my heart or my big toe, whatever you need. I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. So 
She said, according to, to the senators, they basically were the light and the darkness that caused Kavanaugh to get into that place. And we know that Roe versus Wade right now has been leaked out. And, and I will say this, I'm grateful for that. And there's been plenty, plenty of prophecies that said that was going to be overturned. The battle has just begun. Because what I do believe it's going to go through just like they said. But that now it becomes into each state governance to decide what to do about abortion. So we know the ladies, especially, I know everybody should do this, but I'm speaking to the ladies today, it's Mother's Day. We need to be praying and doing whatever part the Holy Spirit tells you to do because we can say more about abortion. I mean, we have more to say about it. It just It's the truth. But we all need to stand up for life. Amen? And so each governor needs to hear us and we need to make, make sure that people understand where we stand. Amen? Amen? I know I'm doing a lot of meddling today. And she said, teach your children what is true. You have got to teach your children, not adding grandchildren, what is the truth. You need to tell them what an abortion really is. I remember a pastor, one of our pastors, I can't think of the name right now, but he's, he used to say, and, and if there's children, you know, cover their ears or whatever, this is for adults. But he said, I taught my daughters to say penis and vagina. I never, you know, did the little fancy words for him. And he felt like it was important at the time. I'm thinking, you are a cuckoo bird. But you know what? He's right. Who knew what we were going to be facing? That we need to tell them the truth. We need to tell them as nasty as, as abortion is. They need to know because they will innately realize when they see what's happening that it's murder. They will innately realize that this is not right. And, and, I've heard prophecies saying that the, this next group of children is going to be raised up in such righteousness. They're going to put a lot of, of generations to shame that they're going to be saying, I am not having any part to do with it. I also found out that they did some kind of survey, and I don't know which group it was. But bottom line is, it's the people from college age to age 35 right now that are saying, we don't want any of this wealth in them. Amen. Who'd have thought? They've had a, they're just done with it. That's the group they thought they had brainwashed so much that they had them. AOC and the pack are on the way out. God told me to, Amen. the Holy Spirit told me to pray that they, that they would lose their influence and affluence. I've been doing that for a couple of, well, a year and a half. Um, and we need to continue to pray. They're on their way out. They're crazy. Yeah, they are. What was the thing you were telling me about? Um, AOC said something about who cares about the truckers whether they deliver the things. I just go to the grocery store and get my groceries when anyway. I need something. When I need something. Any of you that don't get how stupid that is, let me pray for you. You probably voted for it. Right? <laughs> you, can't fix you can't fix stupid. Well, God can if you want to repent. All right, we'll do it that way. So one of the things she said, get a pen and paper ready for those that are interested. And when I edit this, I will add this in there. But she said, we, you, one of the things that every one of us can do is pick up the phone. She said, don't email, don't fax, pick up the phone, contact your legislators, contact your senators, thank them for standing for life. I mean, we've got the most awesome governor. We have the very best governor, I believe, in the entire United States, President, President, Governor Ron DeSantis. He probably will be president one day. Governor Ron Until DeSantis. We all his terms here, though. Yes, we want him to be elected for a, his last turn here because we need them. We need him in Florida right now. But the phone number, the Capitol switchboard, be polite, be courteous, and thank them for standing for life. I never thought about doing that until she said it, but it's 202-224-3121. 202-224, I'm going to say it three times, 3121. One more time. 202 Two two four, three one two one. That's the capital switchboard. So when we're raising godly kids, we use the word of God, right? And and we we teach them from a biblical worldview. And God knows children; He created them, and He knows what they need to be taught. Amen. Amen. So there was a quote that said, "If we don't teach our children to follow Christ, the world will teach them not to." I'm going to say that wow. one more time. If we don't teach our children to follow Christ, the world's going to teach them not to. Moms, take your place. I'm going to I'm going to shoot another cow. What do they call them? Sacred cows. Sacred cows in the head. 
And, and again, and get mad at me. I really don't care. I just don't. I think we need to hear the truth. The truth is what sets us free. But you women that are out there thinking, well, my husband's the head of the home. I can't do it unless he tells me. Shut up. You are a penny waste. <coughs> yes, your husband's the head of the home. But you are, are to teach your children. The Bible said, and there is no man, male, husband, that can counter command God's commands. And he tells us to teach our children. Amen? Amen. Corey Ten Boom said the best learning I had came from teaching. Well, that's profound in itself. You have to be taught. They're not going to get it like like a, you know, oh, osmosis, oh, it's going to fall on them. No, ladies, we have to teach our children and our grandchildren. Like we were, I was sharing this the other day. I don't, I get tickled sometimes, and, you know, <laughs> she's six years old. And she said something about a chicken, and I said, oh, I, I know a song about a chicken. I've shared this before, but some might not have heard it, but there's this song, the Holy Ghost will take the chicken out of you. The Holy Ghost will take the chicken out of you. You can beat up the devil, make him black and blue, because the Holy Ghost will take the chicken out of you. And the Holy Ghost will take the chicken out of you, ladies. I hate to say, but man up. In this case, we need to do what God calls us to do. He'll take the chicken out of you. And Bob Talbert said, teaching children or teaching kids to count is fine, but teaching them what counts is what's best. We need to teach our children morality. They're not going to do it by just. We've got to teach them the truth. And here's some scriptures to back up moms and, and even dads that we are to train our children. Proverbs twenty two six says. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Well, like Franklin Graham's an example. His parents taught him the way he should go, but he was a hellion, he was on drugs, he was everything but a Christian. And I believe he got saved in his 40s. And now he's running the entire ministry. So some of you are like, but I did. And they're just, don't give up. Amen. Don't get, If you give up, they might. It, you may be the reason they go to hell. I, I know I'm, I'm, I just don't feel like time is too short. We don't have time to mince words. I don't have time to be polite to you. You have got to take up that mantle of motherhood and teach your children the truth. You're a father that, you know, that has, maybe your wife's an alcoholic or whatever, and you're raising the children. You need to do what you need to do and make sure that you teach your children the truth. Amen? Amen. Deuteronomy 6, 5 through 9 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Take to heart these words that I give you today. Listen to this. Repeat them to your children. This is Deuteronomy, Old Testament. It's always been God's will for us to teach our children. Talk about them when you're at home or away. When you lie down or get up, write them down and tie them around your wrist. Wear them as headbands as a reminder. Write them on the door frames of your house and on your gates. Do you think he wanted you to get the children the message that he's given you? He absolutely, he wasn't leaving anything out. Deuteronomy 4, verse 9 through 10 says, But watch out, be careful never to forget what you have seen, what you yourselves have seen. Do not let these memories, you know, for us, there might be a memory for your children they don't even know. Do not let these memories escape from your mind as long as you live. Be sure to pass them on to your children and grandchildren. Be sure to pass them on to your children and grandchildren. Never forget the day when you stood before the Lord God. And it goes on. And he said, I will, I, and then summon the people before me. I will personally instruct them. They will learn to fear me as long as they live and they will teach their children to fear me also. God intends us to teach our children. Matthew 9, 13 through 15. One day some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could lay his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. But Jesus said, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. Say, don't stop them. (laughs) For the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are like these children. And he placed his hands on their heads and he blessed them before he left. I have a, a statue, a couple of them, but where Jesus is with the children. Jesus loved, Jesus loved the little children, right? All the children of the world. Yes, Jesus loves me. God is love. He loves us. 
you know, we're all his children, but we need to, to pass on our, the, you know, what we know. First Timothy, New Testament again, verse 4, 10 and 11. This is why we work hard and continue to struggle, for our hope is in the living God, who is the Savior of all people, and particularly of all believers. Teach these things and insist that everyone learn them. We need to teach these things, and we need to insist that they learn them. If we don't, and we have the right, we have the right, the privilege, the blessing to raise patriots, to mm -hmm. raise biblical worldview, men and women of God. We have the great, I'm, I don't think there's any greater calling than to, to raise your children. I don't. Because you're raising the next generation who might be president of the United States, who might be this, that, or the other. But we need to teach our children. Deuteronomy 11:19 said, "Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you're at home, and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed, and when you're getting up." Amen. Amen. And then I'm going to kind of segue and go into the last point I want to make to show you that God uses women. Deborah. How many heard of Deborah, the, the judge in the Old Testament? Well, Deborah was called a judge. She was called a prophetess. She was a mom. She was a wife, and she was the ruler of Israel, and God appointed her. So he doesn't make any mistakes. If he did it back then, so some of those people, we've had somebody recently come in, and they have a problem with women preachers. Well, you've got a problem, you don't know the word. And I'm not, that's not what this is about today, but I'm telling you, because God wants me to tell you, you can be whatever God calls you to be. You can do whatever God calls you to do. And you can say whatever God tells you to say. Because in Christ, there's neither male nor female. Amen? Amen. And Deborah, she she would speak for God. God would tell her what to do, and she would tell the people. She was the mouthpiece for God, for Israel. Amen? Amen. And they said that she held court under the palm of Deborah. And the Israelites came to her to have their disputes decided. So... Judges chapter 4. I'm going to go through a few scriptures and then we're going to be done. I, uh, has this been a good message? Amen. Amen. And it's burning in my heart. And tonight, by the way, if you can come tonight, it's a healing service. We're going to go. I know it's early because Sunday, last Sunday was the first and it messed a lot. My son <laughs> called me and goes, I, I, I need to make a plan with you for Mother's Day. This is like Thursday. I forgot. It just crept up on everybody. So we're doing ours on Monday night because he wanted to do it Saturday night, but we couldn't work. We couldn't fit it in then. So, how many Mother's Day did creep up on every? Yes, it was boom, it was fast. So, healing school is tonight. All right, Judges chapter four. After he in verse one, after Ehud's death, the people of Israel again sinned against the Lord. They would go through this cycle. They would sin against the Lord. The God, God would allow them to be captured and put on, and then they'd cry out to the Lord, and he would set them free. And it would just cycle around. So they were in the cycle, they sinned against the Lord. Verse 2, so the Lord let them be conquered by King Jabin, and blah, blah, blah. The co all right, so verse 3, the commander-in-chief of the army was Sisera. Say Sisera. Sisera. And he had 900 iron chariots, and he made life unbearable for the Israelis for 20 years. So God let them be unbearably treated for 20 years because of their sin. Verse 6, but they finally, I thought this was funny, but finally they begged to the Lord for help. It took them 20 years to beg to the Lord for help. How many of us are begging God, please deliver us from this woke-ism and this garbage, and he will deliver us. Verse 7 says, Israel's leader at that time was the one who was responsible for bringing the people back to God was Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidus, she held court at a place now called Deborah's Palm Tree between, between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites came to her dis to decide their disputes. Verse 9, And one day she summoned Barak, son of Abinoam, who lived in Kedesh, and oh, all these names, I'm going to skip over it. And she said to Barak, The Lord, the God of Israel, has commanded you to mobilize 10,000 men from the tribes of Naphtali, and Zebulun, lead them to Mount Tabor to fight the King Jabin's mighty army with all his chariots. Now remember, they had 900 iron chariots under General Sisera's command. The Lord says, I will draw them to the Kishon River and you will defeat them there. So God has spoken to Deborah and he, she's telling, he said, tell the commander, this is what he's to do and this is what I'm going to do. So she's just giving him instructions that God gave her. Verse 10, brave man that he was. I'll go, but only if you go with me. 
In verse 11, she said, all right, I'll go with you, but I'm warning you now that the honor of conquering Sisera will go to a woman instead of you. So she went with him to Kadesh. Verse 11, when Barak, sell, I mean, verse 10, when Barak summoned the men, and 10,000 men volunteered. I mean, this was a volunteer army, right? I thought that was pretty cool that 10,000 of them yeah. volunteered. And Deborah marched with them. Can you imagine? So she's a mom. She's a wife. She's the judge of the land. She's the voice of God for the people. And she's out there marching with them. And it goes on, uh, verse 12. And when General Cicero was told that Barak and his army were camped at Mount Tabor, he mobilized his entire, entire army, including 900 iron, iron chariots, and then they marched to the Kishon River. And Deborah said to Barak, now is the time for action. And I'm telling you by the Holy Spirit, ladies, now is the time for action. Now is the time for action. The Lord leads on. He has already delivered Sisera into your hands. So Barak led his 10,000 men down the slopes of Mount Tabor into battle. Verse 14, then the Lord threw the enemy into a panic. See, the Lord worked for them. The Lord threw the enemy into a panic. It was already won. When God tells you, I'm taking care of your son. I'm taking care of your daughter. I'm taking care of this situation. It doesn't matter what we see here, feel, smell, taste, whatever. It'll be done. We just have to stand along with him and take action and do whatever he does. Sometimes the action is shut up. Sometimes it really is. But sometimes he has actions for you to take. And some of them might be hard because you, where you want to slap him and God's saying, you know, pay their way to something. You know, give them a gift. Amen? Amen. So... Barak led his 10,000 down the slope. Uh, the Lord threw the enemy into a panic, both the, the soldiers and the charioteers. And L Sisera leaped from his chariot and escaped on foot. foot. This is so cool. Barak and his men chased the enemy and the chariots as far as they did. And Sisera's army was just, all of the army was destroyed, but Sisera had gotten away. And he wanted to get Sisera. Not one man was left alive. Meanwhile, Sisera had escaped to the temp, uh, tent of Jael, the wife of Hebor, the Kenite, for there was a mutual assistance agreement between King Jabin. And it, so they had this thing. So he thought he could trust Jael. How many get that? Sisera, the bad guy. So Jael went out to meet Sisera and says, said to him, Come into my tent, sir. Ladies, don't underestimate the power of a mom, the power of a woman. God using you in a situation to give you the cunning that you need. Why is it the serpent harmless in the dove? And, in this case, deadly. So come into my tent, sir. You will be safe here in our protection. Don't be afraid. So he went into her tent. She covered him with a blanket. He said, please give me some water, <laughs> for I am very thirsty. Well, she not only gave him water. Back then, it was like an honor to give him milk, curdled milk at that. And I was like, cool. Oh. But anyway, that was an honor. So she not just, um, you know, he's saying, this lady is so nice. She's going to protect me. I'm going to get a nap. I'm going to get something to drink. So she served him milk. And then she covered him again. And she said, stand at, he said, stand at the door of the tent, and if anyone comes by looking for me, tell him that no one is here. Verse 21, the jail took a sharp tent peg and hammer. And I'm pretty sure that those tent pegs were humongous, right? Am I right? I didn't know. I should have looked it up, but I'm pretty sure they're big. Because it would hold up their tent was their dwelling place, right? So it had to be a pretty big thing. She took a sharp temp peg and a hammer and quietly creeping up to him as he slept, she drove the, pen, the peg through his temples and into the ground, and so he died, for he was fast asleep from weariness. Now, I'm grateful I'm not called to take a temp peg and drive it at anyone's head, because we are, you know, we don't live in those days that they were, I know. <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> Pastor Ed I'm hitting all the hammers. <laughs> and then verse seventeen, when Barak came look, came by looking for Cicero, Jael went out to meet him and said, "Come, I will show you the man you are looking for." So he followed her into the tent and found Cicero lying there dead with the tent peg through his temples. So that day, the Lord used Israel to subdue King Jabin of Canaan, and from that time on, Israel became stronger and stronger against King Jabin until. He and all his people were destroyed. Entire group of people were destroyed because they followed God. And then in Judges 5, Deborah and Barak sang a song about their wonderful victory. I won't, you can go, but they praise the Lord. Israel's leaders bravely led. Some of the things are until 
you know, Israel's population was dwindling until Deborah became a mother to Israel. You think that that's just a statement, but when I was reading that, our population has is has been dwindling to abortion and other reasons until we, the women of God, stand up and say, enough, no. And we've been standing up, and we will continue to stand up. And when it gets down to the state level, I'm calling on you ladies, stand up. Make those phone calls. Do whatever we have. And we can do it in love. Like, thank you for voting for life. Thank you. For, you know, so do it in a nice way. No, and it's, I didn't even realize that there was 40,000 men of Israel, only 10,000 showed up, and they didn't even have any weapons. They had to get weapons because just like they're trying to do here and take that away from us, if they get the weapons away from the people, they can't fight back and they keep them in slavery. Amen? So it talks about down to the valley went the princess of Issachar with Deborah and Barak, and God, at God's command, they rushed into the valley. And you can, it's a, it goes on and on and on. And I like this part. Bless BJL. Another lady, ladies. Bless BJL, the wife of Hebar the Kenite. Yes, may she be blessed above all women who live in tents. Let, may you be blessed above all women who walk wherever you walk, live wherever you live. You are salt and light in this world. You are the moms that can take and train up your children and grandchildren in the way that they should go. You can teach them to be patriots. You can teach them the truth about what an abortion really is. You can teach them the truth about what a male is and what a female is. And you can properly do these things in, in a manner that it should be done. Amen. Amen. So, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And it said to, uh, here that J Jael was honored for years by the women of Israel for her resourcefulness, her courage, and served as a model. Father, I just thank you right now. We call forth moms and grandmas, arise and take your place. And Father, we, as we join forces as women of God, that we form a barrier that you will not touch our children. Satan, we command you to get your hands off of our children and our grandchildren. You can't have them. We claim them for the kingdom of God. We call them mighty men and women of God. And Father, I pray that you take the blinders off of our eyes, the stoppers out of our ears, that you'll make our hearts pliable. Father, that we will see and know exactly what to do, when to do it, how to do it. Father, that we will, that I command the spirit of timidity to leave. Father, your word says you have not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. Father, that there are ways that we're going to accomplish what you have for us to, to accomplish. I do pray a blessing today on every mother who's watching, every grandma who's watching. Father, everyone who has been a, even though that they may not have given birth to, to children, that they've been a, a mother to, chil to people, to children. Father, I pray your blessing exceedingly abundantly above all that they could ask or think upon them today. May they be honored as you intended them to be honored as moms. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, that's it. You moms have a happy Mother's Day. And again, if you can come tonight, anyone that's watching, you need healing, uh, bas basically come and get healed. Amen. 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 600 North Lake Destiny Road, Maitland, Florida. This is the Sheraton Orlando North. See you then. And I'm Pastor Bucky. I don't think we said that. Hello. Bye. Who wants to change the world? Well, through us to change the world. Holy Spirit, well, through us, touch and change our world.